am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This reaction has some pretty cool chemistry in it. The first thing we need to know is that, is that terbutyl lithium is actually just another way of saying that there's a very strong base in this reaction. So terbutyl lithium is effectively like a carbon nucleophile and it's a big bulky base. And since it's bulky, the first step is not actually going to use it as a nucleophile to open up this epoxide ring. Instead, it will come and deprotonate one of the hydrogens on this molecule. Largely due to inductive effects, the most acidic hydrogen is going to be this hydrogen located here. So what will happen first is that a base will come in and deprotonate at this position. This is going to effectively do like an elimination reaction where you're kicking over these electrons to form a new alkene. And when we do that, we also need to open up our epoxide or else we'd form five bonds at carbon. So this gives us a product where now we're forming a conjugated diene in this process where the benzyl ether is going to be located here. And this is OBN stands for benzyl ether, by the way, for those who have never seen it before. And then what we have here is going to be a negatively charged oxygen located at this position that has three lone pairs on it and then we also have our TMS group which stands for trimethylsilyl so three different methyl groups attached to a silicon atom and for those of you really familiar with a bunch of named reactions hopefully what you start to see is that what is going to come next is what's known as a Brook rearrangement so in Brook rearrangements you end up with a a carbon atom that contains a negatively charged oxygen, largely through deprotonation of an alcohol, but then a neighboring trimethyl silo group where what can happen next is the coordination of the oxygen to the Lewis acid of this silicon. And this is gonna form a new product which basically looks again like an epoxide, except for this time, rather than having the epoxide formed through several different carbon atoms, this oxygen is going to be attached to a silicon at this position. And then we still have our three methyl groups coming off of it. And this makes this silicon negatively charged because now it has extra electrons attached to it. So it still allows us to preserve our charge. So then the next step in what is known as a Brook rearrangement, so that's B-R-O-K, these electrons will actually come over and give us a carbon lone pair that is going to be negatively charged. And this is due to the high strain and in fact we're forming a negative charged silicon so this is going to want to give up those electrons pretty readily and it also allows us to further elongate the conjugated pi system because now we're going to have these two alkenes located here with our benzyl ether but then also now we're going to end up with another lone pair of electrons that's negatively charged and then from here we have our O trimethyl silo located at this position. So notice what we have done is extend that conjugated diene. And since these are delocalized pi electrons now, what can happen is that this lone pair of electrons can come down to form an alkene, which is going to kick over these pi electrons to locate it at this position, which is going to allow us to use these pi electrons to come and actually do an attack on this silicon. And this is actually going to close a ring that contains seven members. So remember, we end up with our silicon located at this position, which has our three methyl groups coming off of it. That is still attached to the oxygen, which will go in this direction. Then from here, we have a carbon to another carbon with a double bond on it, carbon in this direction, followed by another carbon with a double bond on it, and in this carbon is the one that actually has our benzyl ether attached to it. And then we have one more carbon to carbon bond until we get to our carbon to silicon bond. And in this example, the silicon is now again going to be negatively charged because it has those extra electrons attached to it. So then I know you just learned about Brook rearrangements, but the next step is actually what's known as a retro Brook rearrangement, where instead of the electrons coming over here, what will happen is that the electrons will go to this oxygen and this will open up this ring. And it's actually how we get this trimethyl silo group in our product to be on the opposite side of the molecule, whereas it started next to this oxygen. So now the product of this transformation is going to contain our TMS located at this position, attached to a carbon at this position, then a carbon-carbon bond here, and then we will have our carbon-carbon double bond located at this position, carbon-carbon bond here, and a carbon-carbon double bond here, and this is the location of our benzyl ether, and then here is where our oxygen is located, and it is negatively charged because it has three lone pairs of electrons on this oxygen atom. So then remember, you were told in your reaction conditions, the second step was to add hydrochloric acid, which can serve as a proton donor, which is gonna be important for our next step where these pi electrons come down to form a carbonyl carbon, 
which is going to kick over these pi electrons to being at, at this position, which is then going to kick over these pi electrons to come and attack as a nucleophile and deprotonate our hydrochloric acid. And that's actually the last step in the reaction to form this product. So remember, the first step is our tert lithium acts as a base and deprotonates this hydrogen, which forms a conjugated pi system and opens up our epoxide ring. From here, we can have coordination of the oxygen to the silicon because one is a Lewis base and one is a Lewis acid, and that is going to set up our Brook rearrangement where these electrons can come and give us a delocalized pi electrons as a carbon lone pair that's negatively charged. And what will happen is that now we have these delocalized pi electrons, which can allow a cascade of reactions to occur where this terminal alkene acts as a nucleophile for that silicon. And once that occurs, we end up with a retro Brook rearrangement. And then finally, formation of our carbonyl carbon allows us to deprotonate an acid. And if you're interested in more details about this reaction, this actually comes from a Journal of Organic Chemistry paper published in 1996, and the volume number is 61. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this organic transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below, and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another mechanism. I'll see you next Monday.